Hey everybody, welcome to segment two of Pilates P's and Q's, Pilates prerequisites and questions. And today I wanted to piggyback off of last week's post about defining mobility with this week's post, which is three different questions from three different Pilates instructors, all basically about what, what the appropriate ranges are for joint mobility work for osteopathic joints, artificial joints, and basically structurally compromised joints. And I wanted to put them all together because it kind of, the first thing that I wanted to really address is the fact that this kind of joint mobility work through the functional range conditioning system, which is what I use, isn't about flexibility or having to improve and increase joint ranges. It's really about establishing joint health and joint function. That's the primary and first goal that we try to achieve. That's why it's such a great and beneficial tool for everyone. Whether you're flexible and you need that strength and control at your end ranges so that you can sustain your movement practice longer and or without pain, or you lack basic function and ranges in different joints and have issues with your movements that you're currently doing because chances are you're already a movement practitioner. Maybe you do yoga, Pilates, bar classes, weight training, or maybe you do a little bit of everything. And if you are, you should have good basic joint function in all your joints in order for them to all play well with each other. So that's why the first thing that we do is teach you the tools to assess whether you do have basic joint function and health and the appropriate ranges for each joint. Does the hip rotate in all the ranges it's supposed to? Does the shoulder have strength and control and be able to move in all the different ranges that it's supposed to? Does the spine flex and move at each vertebrae? By establishing these basic functions all throughout the joints in the body, you're also developing better central nervous system control or afferents what is being told from the joints to the body is accurate. Many times after injuries or pain or we, or just basic lack of utilizing those ranges, our joints are feeding our brain inaccurate information or it's very clear. And so then the information that's being sent back is also not accurate. And this joint mobility work also introduces you to a lot more rotational ranges that your movement practice probably doesn't encompass. So being able to rotate and control and also strengthen the rotational aspects of all the different joints. So as far as what are appropriate ranges for each of these circumstances is really been built into the joint mobility work by give by being given these tools to assess and then work with your body and that joint in order to improve basic joint function will determine what is appropriate for each person. I have a lot of clients that fit into one or maybe all of those situations and you can work around it because there's a lot of joints that we can all work on, but also you can continue to strengthen the ranges that you that are safe for you to do in order to keep that joint function and health. So this is why I think it's really important, just like you would with a movement practice, you would wanna work with someone who's certified in your movement practice. You would want to work with someone who understands and studies and continues to educate themselves on the science behind all this joint mobility work. So I hope that helps clarify things a little bit. I'm more than happy to continue answering this question. If you have more for me, please send me a direct message or leave a comment below. If you have a topic that you would like me to discuss or an exercise that you would like me to review, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.